DaVinci Resolve is not only the best and probably most professional video editing app out there, but it's also free. That makes it perfect to get started and that's why I want to show you how to edit a cinematic travel sequence for free in DaVinci Resolve today. So I would say let's have a look at the sequence first. DaVinci Resolve is a bit different than other video editing apps because in DaVinci Resolve you have more of a step-by-step -step workflow like in Final Cut for example everything is in one place all your effects, color grades, timeline etc. But in DaVinci Resolve that works a bit differently because you have multiple pages there's the media page, cut page, edit page, fusion page, fair light, color page and then the delivery page but the only pages that you really need if that feels a bit too much for you at first is the edit page the color page and the delivery page. I would actually use Fairlight sometimes a little bit too but it's not a must and it makes sense to sometimes use the media page to sort your media files but it's, it's not really complicated. You basically just drag your files and folders in there and there you have it. And that was also my first step before I even started editing the video. I ensured that all the video files are in there, that I have a proper folder structure etc. because that allows me to find everything quickly and so I can edit a lot quicker. And yeah, I cut my finger. Lemon versus Pascal, we know who won it. And then there's the second step where I at first drag everything into the timeline step by step, not necessarily all video files, but at least all video files from a certain camera, etc. And then I start removing all of those clips that I don't want to have. I cut other clips down to only the stuff that I want to keep in there. And I also sort those clips around so that I essentially build a storyline. So instead of directly editing everything to the beat or so, I really just make sure that everything is in place so that I have a proper structure. So in this sequence I wanted to start in the morning at sunrise time with some drone shots. So I had a quick look at my drone shots first there, saw what I could take and what not. I even deleted a few more drone shots later so I really filtered out at first what show drone shots are possible. And then I dragged some of those files from my R6 Mark II in there. In that case I did not drag all files into the timeline because I worked with those folders before already so I already knew what footage is in there and what I want to have so I didn't need to go through all the footage again I just dragged it straight into the timeline and after that I did the same as in the beginning again with my GoPro footage I dragged it all into the timeline because there were many clips that were really long you know like when you go scuba diving you just keep the camera running all the time similar to drone shots actually so they also just skipped through it and I sorted everything out so that I only kept everything in there that I wanted to keep later and I also sorted it again in a way that it makes sense and then I also sorted all of those clips together so that not just all the GoPro clips made sense in the order that they are but also all clips from all cameras together made sense. So I wanted to start there showing the nice sunrise time then switching to the boats driving to that location where we had the dive getting into the water then maybe swimming a bit around seeing some fish and suddenly this ultra nice whale shark appears there. So that was the storyline and that's how I sorted all of those clips so that everything fits well together and by the way now that we talk about whale sharks watching travel videos etc is a lot of fun but you have to do it by yourself. It obviously looks good when you watch it at home on your TV, on your phone, etc. But the moment when you're actually in the water and you see this giant animal next to you and uh, it's, it's just a, such a good feeling, that, that's really what makes all of that stuff worth it. Like for me, it's always that the camera is oftentimes the reason why I go out. I want to get some nice shots, especially for my YouTube channel, etc. But then every time and I'm out, maybe not every time, but 90% of the times, there's something that I enjoy so much that 
it finally is not just about the camera anymore. So that's just one thing that I want to mention here, guys. It's not just about the camera or shooting videos, etc. It's about the experiences. So go out, go on trips and do something awesome. It mustn't be a whale shark. Also just climbing up a mountain, etc. and having this nice stunning view in front of you and so on. This is already worth it. And now after having everything sorted in the timeline, the next step was to find the right music. And there I can give you a tip, you should really think about the story that you have or that you want to tell with your videos. So what I knew was that it starts with the sunrise and driving the boat on the ocean. And there I wanted to have something less intense, something a bit more chill. And then we're entering the water. There I wanted the music to get a bit more intense. And then finally we're seeing that whale shark and there I really want the music to explode, to be more epic or like really, really, really intense. So I was essentially looking for a soundtrack that has these three steps in there. And this is where our today's sponsor Epidemic Sound comes into play because they always make it super easy to find such soundtracks. And they actually just had an update to their player which makes it even easier. So let's have a look at that. The first new feature that they've introduced to search for music better is called Topics. And it's essentially hashtags in the search bar. So you type in the hashtag that you're looking for and then it finds certain tracks and that makes it a lot easier to search for music especially if you have a soundtrack that might already fit a bit but it's not perfect yet and you're looking for something similar and then there's the next feature which is called semantic search that's super cool it feels like chat gpt you're essentially using the search bar by typing in what music you're looking for like music for a travel video music for a sunrise in the mountains, music for a camper van trip or stuff like that. I guess they use some AI or something like that to then figure out which music tracks would fit to that. Like That is a super cool feature that makes it so easy to find the right music. And there are a few smaller upgrades that they did as well. For example, you get more suggestions now when you type something in the search bar. That might also help you a little bit if you don't necessarily know exactly what to search for. And they also updated the results page which now shows you matching themes, artists and certain releases what also overall makes it a bit easier to find the right music and if you shouldn't find anything what honestly doesn't happen that often then it at least gives you some suggestions that might still fit because maybe sometimes it is the case that you don't really know what to look for maybe you use different words to describe the same and so this feature can also be very helpful so if you don't have epidemic sound yet you want to have an easy way to find the right music for your videos then definitely check that out I will leave a link to that in the description below. And so the next step that I took was to simply drag that music into the timeline after downloading it of course and I chose an instrumental version here because I felt like having that soundtrack together with vocals didn't really fit. That's also a nice feature of Epidemic Sound. You can always download tracks as instrumental versions or even only the so-called stems which are like either the drums only or the guitar and the vocals etc. So you can really customize the song as you want. And then I started editing the clips to the beat and that is actually very easy you just skip through it and every time you hear a beat you edit that on there and what's super helpful while doing that is to use the arrow keys here on your keyboard the left and right arrow key because that skips forward or backward by only one frame where you can still hear the audio from that frame so by using those arrow keys you can go exactly to that point where the beat is instead of kind of guessing it and then you can make your cut there and quickly go through everything and cut it down so that it fits perfectly and also a tip there what made it even easier and faster for me to cut everything is that I have Z X and and C mapped to certain actions on DaVinci Resolve. So X for example only does a simple cut and then Z does a ripple edit which essentially means that it cuts and deletes everything to the left and C does exactly the same to the right. I will leave you my settings preset in the description below so you can just download it and you get exactly the same keyboard shortcuts that I use. And as you can see here that makes editing super fast because you don't have to just cut everything, click on it, delete it, etc. But matching the cuts to the beat was not the only thing that I did. I also did another or used another technique there which is called speed ramping and I also adjusted it to the beat in the first drone shot. You can see that here the drone shot starts quite quite slow then it kind of plays forward fast 
and then it gets slow again. That's called a speed ramp. And as you can hear, I also matched that to the beat. And that's also something that I want to teach you here. You don't only need to match cuts to the beat, but sometimes also stuff that happens in your videos. For example, in my recent R8 video, I showed you a sequence at the beginning and there I even matched the movements of the hands to the beat, what I think comes out really good at the beginning. Let's have a quick look at that. There you can see that, like it's not just matching the cuts, it's also matching hand movements, etc. So think about that when editing your videos, it makes them feel so much better. And let me also show you how to do that speed ramping technique that I just talked about. So the first thing that I do here again is to find the beat and then I skip two or three frames forward like before the actual beat comes because with speed ramping it happens more gradual so you don't want to edit perfectly on the beat but instead you want to be where essentially it gets a bit faster because then I feel it matches a little bit better. So I would only go two or three frames before the actual beat happens. And then you press Command and R on your keyboard, which opens this top panel, which is there to do the actual speed ramping. And you also can see a little icon now in the middle at the bottom of the clip. And when you click on that icon, you can select at speed point. And that's kind of like a keyframe or a cut or something like that where you essentially cut the speed. So because I first wanted to speed the shot up and then slow it down again, I had to set two speed points. The first one where I just set and then I added the second speed point where I want the clip to slow it down again. And now you can simply click above that second speed point and drag it to the left so that you essentially make it faster in the middle because now the middle part shrinks together so it gets faster. And there I match the second speed point also with about two to three frames before the next beat start so that it feels right. And now there's one more thing that you should do which is to make it smoother. So to do that you right click on the clip and then you select retime curve and there on the retime curve you see this two keyframes there are now these two dots and when you click on one of those dots you can click on that little curve icon and now you see that it adds like two points and around this point the middle point it looks a bit more like a curve now and that essentially makes it smoother and I also did a bit of sound design which is super easy actually you just go on a platform such as epidemic sound that also has sound effects and depending on what sound effects you want to have like maybe a driving boat or a maybe a whoosh sound effect for your transitions or a speed ramp etc you just search for that download the matching sound effect and drag it into your timeline and like place it in the right part of course so it really sounds good after that you usually adjust the volume a little bit and you can use the pen tool to make it coming more from the, from the left or right for that I would definitely suggest to use headphones because otherwise you can't hear that well like with headphones you really notice where the sound is coming from and if it feels right when you look at the video playing at the same time but what I want to emphasize here is that when it comes to sound effects, you really need to choose the right ones. Like, for example, if you have a whoosh sound effect to emphasize a transition or a speed ramp, etc., then you should really listen to the sound effect, how it feels like. Is it bassy? Is it brighter? How long is it? Does the length of that whoosh sound fit to the motion in there from the transition or from the speed ramp, etc.? Like, you should really try multiple sound effects and figure out which one fits best. And aside from that, what I would also recommend over time when you edit more and more videos is to build a sound library, like all the sound effects that you download and keep them somewhere in a folder structure so that you can easily find them later again because that will save you a lot of time. And there are also certain websites that offer sound packs. For example, I use a lot of sound effects from a website called Visual Tone. They offer sound effects that are really good for travel videos, but they are also not super expensive like on certain other platforms. So this is one platform that I can can recommend a lot and there you find lots of whoosh sound effects background sound effects for traveling etc footsteps and all of that stuff of course epidemic sound also has them but it's like sometimes some sound effects from epidemic sound match better and sometimes sound effects from visual tone or other sound packs that i purchased over time so definitely look into that as well i will also leave a link to visual tone in the description below okay that's the main edit but of course you also want your footage to look good and that is where color grading comes into play and at first i would always recommend you to shoot in lock color pro 
Pro fights if your camera sh uh, shoots in 10 bit. If you have an older or cheaper 8 bit camera, then I would not do that, and you don't really need to do much color grading. You can basically apply a LUT or so because lock color profiles always give you the highest dynamic range of your camera, so you can see a lot of detail in the highlights and the shadows. And DaVinci Resolve actually makes it very easy to color grade this footage because, like in the past, it was always quite difficult to color grade. It took a lot of time, but now with DaVinci Resolve, it's very easy. And that is where DaVinci Resolve's color management comes into play. So I will just show you that quickly. It actually looks complicated, but I leave you a preset in the description below that you can just download and insert into DaVinci Resolve, and then you have the right settings there. So basically what you just do is you go under project settings, and there under color management and color science, you select DaVinci YRGB color managed, then under color processing mode, HDR DaVinci white gamut intermediate, you turn automatic color management off before, and under output color space, you select Rec 709A if you add it on an Apple device, and if you're on a Windows device, then you select Rec 709 Gamma 2.0. Form. But again, for the first part at least, you can also just download my preset and then you have all the settings done for you already. And now the rest is super easy. You go onto the color page and there you can just select all those clips that you have shot in lock. You do a right click on those clips and then under input color signs, you can simply select, for example, in my case, Canon Cinema Gamut Canon Lock 3 because that's the profile that I shot in. As you can see, it instantly turns them into pretty good looking footage. Oftentimes, you could actually leave it like that already. It's definitely not bad. Maybe you have to do some small exposure adjustments or increase the contrast and saturation a little bit. But aside from that, you oftentimes don't have to do too much to the clips because it already looks pretty good. But of course, I'm a perfectionist. I always want my shots to look a bit more film-like. That's why I used one of those film LUTs that come together with DaVinci Resolve. You find them if you click on LUTs and then under film looks there, but they are a bit more complicated to use. You first have to use a color space transform to transform that into Cineon lock colors, because that's what these LUTs are made for, and then you essentially get the right colors. So it makes it a bit more complicated, but again, I have a preset for you to do that. It's a so-called power grade. You will also find it in the description below. Just download that, drag it into DaVinci Resolve, and then you get the same result just by dragging that into your notes panel there. When I edited the GoPro footage, then it wasn't really working with that film look LUT because maybe it was a little bit too intense, so I got some weird artifacting there. That's why I actually color graded the GoPro footage by myself by using that curves tool and making a very strong S-curve, etc. to like kind of also give it a similar film look with a high contrast and so on. So there I played a bit more around. It's definitely a bit more complicated to do, but if you play a bit around with those tools over time, then you will also be able to get good results with that. But to get started, I would definitely suggest you to use that color management workflow, what I showed you in the beginning, where you just select what lock profile you shot. It pretty much does it automatically. So, so much about color grading. I know this is a complicated topic, so definitely subscribe for more tutorials on that. I also have a few more tutorials on that on my channel, which you can, for example, find one here in the description below. And I also made another video about how to edit a bit faster in DaVinci Resolve, which you will find here, so check that out as well. And aside from that, I hope you got good value out of this tutorial. If yes, then please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I would say I see you in the next video.